Okay, welcome ladies and gentlemen to my talk about fast collision checking for intelligent vehicle motion planning. It will be a bit different from the other talks that we heard so far since it won't describe a complete autonomous system in all its broadness, but instead I will pick only a very small piece of the puzzle and try to describe it in great detail. And it's, this will be collision checking. It's actually in itself is only a small part of my PhD work with, which is in motion planning. Uh, so to outline my talk, um, I first like to define the problem at hand and then motivate why it's worth actually being solved, uh, present some related work in the field, uh, say some words about obstacle representation since this is just an important prerequisite in collision checking, uh, and then uh, enter directly into the methodology, um, introduce the concept of, of configuration space obstacles, uh, tell you how this is related to convolution and the Minkowski sum. Um, the core of the whole approach is a geometric decomposition. And um, I will show you how, how this is applicable to a dense and a sparse type of collision checking. Um, finally, I'd like to present some results and summarize my talk. Uh, OK, this here is uh, the problem at hand. It's actually very simple. It's, uh, we have this blue robot here and some red obstacles around it. The robot is subject to um, a translation xy and a rotation theta. And the question we try to answer is, um, given x, y, and theta, is the robot in collision or not? It's as simple as that. And that's what the talk will be about. Um, well, uh, solving this problem is actually pretty important, since at least if you, like, m like myself, you come from motion planning. Uh, since, um, well, I'm dealing with motion planning problems like this one here. This is a parking maneuver where the vehicle has to maneuver forward and backwards. Uh, and you see here that actually a collision checking must be very precise since you see that the vehicle is here and here is coming very close to the obstacles. Um, on the other hand, a collision checking must be very, very fast since um, all motion planning strategies that are applied for these kind of scenarios that have a this certain combinatorial flavor to them where the vehicle has to maneuver back and forth and find some gaps um, are search-based. Uh, and this means that they expand in one or the other way a search tree like this, and uh, each part of this search tree has completely has to be checked for collision, and uh, this search tree just can grow very, very huge, and it is not unusual to have to check for millions of collisions during one simple uh, motion planning query. Um, yeah, well, some motion planning strategies that you may, may, may encounter that are search-based are A-star, state lattices, rapidly uh, exploring random trees, probabilistic roadmaps, and there are others. Um, annoyingly, this topic is often neglected in, in literature that actually presents applications of these methods. Um, so I'd like today to give you a very detailed account of how we solve this. Um, yes, yeah, some reason why this is often neglected, perhaps, um, uh, that there are a lot of theorists in this field that just will tell you all of the time that robots are point-shaped, which is, of course, a very unpractical assumption. Um, in many actually very well practical robots research, um, pre uh, robots are, uh, for example, here robots are approximately disc-shaped. For example, this little soccer board or uh, this Mars rover or this Segway-based platform, if you look at them from the top, um, you can fairly good approximate them by a disk shape. And uh, that simplifies matters a bit since uh, a disk shape is invariant to rotation and yeah, collision checking can just be solved more easy for disk shapes. Um, we in the intelligent vehicle community, however, are well normally using um, standard cars which we do not have purpose built and that therefore are not disk shaped at all. Uh, and with this car, the problem is that, um, well, the car can fit in here in this orientation, but can't in this orientation, and this difficult matters a lot. The standard approach for solving um, these problems is our convolution-based methods, which are accelerated by the fast Fourier transform. Um, some other approaches are hierarchical. For example, uh, CMU used this approach on board of BOSS. Um, they checked first an inscribing circle to the vehicle shape, if this is in collision, then the whole vehicle must naturally be in collision. 
and then they check some outscribing circle. If this is not in collision, then the whole vehicle cannot be in collision at all. And a more expensive collision test must only be carried out uh, in this case where the inner circle is collision free and the outer circle is in collision. Uh, some words to obstacle representation. In a lot of classical um, motion planning literature, obstacles have been represented as polygons. This is purely pragmatical since uh, in the past memory was very expensive and polygons just allow for a very compact and memory efficient representation of obstacles. Um, this is a little bit away from practice since it's very difficult deriving a polygonal representation from sensor data. And so this is, in my, I think this is only applicable for well, constructed toy examples that theorists may, may use, or perhaps in very highly structured environments where you have map data available, for example, in underground parkings or something like that. In practical motion planning, um, practically all, everybody uses discrete grid maps in one or the other ways. Um, they can represent arbitrary shapes. They can easily be derived from, from real sensor data. And um, what we are currently using for parking maneuvers is something of approximately this size. It's 256 by 256 pixels at a resolution of 10 centimeters. OK. Um, on this slide, I'll actually prove you that the theorists actually were right, since um, if for this triangular robot, uh, if you look at this shaded area, these are obstacles, and this shaded area is actually called the Minkowski sum of the robot shape and the obstacle shape. And uh, you can convince yourself that you cannot place uh, this reference point of the robot inside of this shaded area without the robot intersecting the obstacles. And uh, since the obstacle can rotate, uh, we can extend the xy plane here by this theta coordinate. And you can imagine that this is only one slice inside of this three-dimensional structure. And this simplifies motion planning a lot, since in this space here with these so-called configuration space obstacles, um, the robot can actually be assumed point-shaped at the cost of one added dimension, of course. Um, OK, here's the re relation uh, to convolution. If, as I introduced, um, obstacles are represented as a discrete grid, uh, you can do the convolution of a uh, vehicle-shaped kernel and the obstacle map. This here is a convolution and uh, with the obstacles overlaid in black. Uh, and every point in the convolution image that is not, uh, that, that is zero or that is larger than zero, uh, it actually comprises the Minkowski sum of these two sets. Um, well, and naturally you would have to do this for different kernels of different orientations of the vehicle. We will, throughout this talk, we will assume that we have 72 discrete orientations of the vehicle. Um, OK, here's a different story. This is a little bit a step backward to the disk shape. A disk convoluted with the obstacles looks like this. It's a rotationally invariant. Um, but now look at this here. If we do a convolution between a disk and this very simple kernel consisting of only three impulses, we yield this shape here which is a quite good approximation of a vehicle shape. Um, now, the, the properties of the um, convolution, actually, commutativity and associativity, um, allow us to derive this. It's actually, it's no matter in which um, order we do these convolutions. We can start out from our disk convolution here, convolute this with this impulse kernel, and yield this approximation to the Minkowski sum or to the convolution. And this is a Minkowski sum. Um, so what does that buy us? It, it actually bears huge performance benefits, since um, if we here look at the, at the original approach, you have to do 72 convolutions, FFT-based naturally, to yield this then three-dimensional structure. Uh, this here is just to remind you, this is just a discrete representation of our three-dimensional um, configuration space. Uh, we only have, since this here is rotationally invariant, only have to do one convolution. Uh, with a dense kernel and then do 72 convolutions with this very sparse kernel. And you won't do an FFT or some dense convolution with this. Uh, you will just do one single run over, the ops over this, uh, the, the circular convoluted map and create this approximation of the configuration space obstacles. Um, OK, let's take a closer look at, at this circular de uh, decomposition of, of the vehicle shape. 
if you assume a rectangular shape, you can derive some equations by, by some geometric reasoning here uh, that gives you an optimal covering of this rectangle with circles. You can do this in different manners. You can actually also do, use circles of different red eye uh, to yield an even more economic um, approximation of the vehicle shape. Uh, or what you can do, you can um, ask your car manufacturer for a scale drawing. This is actually a, a precise scale drawing of our lovely Passat here. And um, then just put some circles on top uh, of this. Uh, if you do that, then you actually profit from the current spleen of uh, car designers that like to put these rounded shapes at the front and the back of the vehicle. And so... Um, if you put this to our target discretization of 10 centimeters, uh, you yield uh, this discrete uh, kernel, which actually, as you can convince yourself, approximates the vehicle shape really good. And there's only one, perhaps one overhang here that's worth mentioning. Um, yeah, and that's our target uh, resolution. Um, now, if you look at these circles, that's actually a, a, a more... Um, efficient way for collision checking these circles and then doing the full convolution. You can derive an algorithm from, from a Bresenham's circle drawing algorithm uh, with which you can scan for these uh, corner pixels here. And um, if you compare these drawings here, you can see that these pixels exactly comprise the corners of some axis aligned rectangles that cover uh, this discrete disk very nicely. And, well, this, again, buys us something since um, these boxes can be collision checked very quickly by using another very simple pre-calculation. It's called the integral image and can be calculated by one single run over the obstacle map. Uh, the integral image actually gives you for one pixel position UV uh, the sum of all the pixels in this area here. Uh, and from this, you can very easily uh, calculate the sum of all the pixels in an arbitrary rectangular area. Area. You actually just start out by um, this integral here, then subtract this one, um, subtract, oops, subtract this one here, and um, if you paid attention, you have seen that we've subtracted this here twice, so we add this again, and um, end up, this is a formula we just have successfully constructed, uh, we, you end up with the sum of all pixels in this rectangle. And of course, if uh, this integral is zero, then this rectangle is collision free. And all you have to do is to do four table lookups of the corner points of the rectangle to find that out. Um, okay. Um, actually, there are some planners that, that for this, all this complicated pre-computation might not be required at all. We have currently, we have just aimed at creating this structure here, this, which is a very powerful structure since you only need one table lookup to do a complete collision check for one configuration, and you have actually done all collision checks at once. Um, but there might be planners, like these very popular reactive planners that almost any team that I know somehow has in his car, uh, which only chooses one trajectory. It's a bit simplified here, but it chooses one trajectory from one small finite set of pre-computed trajectories. And this, of course, means that there probably won't be millions of collision checks here. Um, and on these sparse problems, we maybe we do not want to calculate the, the uh, whole co um, configuration space at once. Um, I will so in a second give you some numbers how, how much runtime that costs us. Um, uh, for this, it would actually be high, nice to just have a, a collision checker that che can point-wise check one specific collision very quickly. And um, actually, through our decomposition, we have achieved that without uh, actually having intended the, it in the first place. But as as with this full convolution path, we can stop, for example, after this disconvolution, and then instead of doing this convolution, just for every single collision check, do three table lookups instead of one, uh, which does not cost much more, um, and, well, save on all of these 72 convolutions here. Um, we, we found out in some experiments that um, this actually pays off whenever you, have, you expect to do less than one million collision checks. It depends, of course, a bit on the parameters of your obstacle map. Um, and you can even go one step, oops, sorry. You can go one step further and uh, already stop here and only calculate uh, the integral image and do for every single collision check, not only look at these three points here, but also do the decomposition of this circle. And um, 
this is of course much more expensive than just doing three um, uh, three table lookups, but you save this convolution, and this pays off, or is, is a faster method if you expect to do only 22,400 uh, collision checks. Okay, um, the results that I like to present you are mainly in, in, in performance figures. Um, this is the, par the set of parameters that we found for our ma motion planner to work well in, in parking scenarios. It's a map of 256 by 256 pixels at 10 centimeters resolution, 72 discrete angles. Uh, the vehicle shape is decomposed in the way that I described earlier with five circles, and all these experiments were run on a laptop computer. Um, and here you get an account of um, yeah, how long that takes if you do the full convolution. Uh, with our method, this takes 62 milliseconds. Uh, with the conventional method that does a convolution of all these vehicle-shaped kernels without a decomposition, it takes almost one second. Uh, and if consecutively you do one million collision checks, that uh, costs you another 110 milliseconds. If you do that a little bit more sparse approach with only um, doing a disconvolution, uh, then the whole thing costs you 7.7 uh, milliseconds with the Fourier transform and convolution 13.5 milliseconds, and one million collision checks cost you 120 milliseconds. Um, if you only pre-compute the integral image, one collision check will cost you 410 milliseconds, but the whole pre-computation will only cost you 1.2 milliseconds. So, um, I'd like to summarize my talk. I've given you a detailed account of a highly optimized method for collision checking. Um, it consisted of decomposing the vehicle shape first into disks and then the disks into axis-aligned rectangles. It's pre precise enough to be applied in, for maneuvering in tight spaces, like in parking or taking caterers or something like that. But it's also fast enough to be applied in reactive um, planning scenarios for on-road driving, for example. And um, yeah, you even have this additional flexibility and balance and speed versus precision by choosing these different levels of sparsity. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. I'd be glad to have you.